Well, we're joined now by Sir Nigel Scheinwald. He was, until last year, Britain's ambassador to the United States and was previously the UK's most senior diplomat in Brussels. He sits on the advisory council of the pro-European coalition, Business for New Europe. Uh, Sir Nigel, can you, from your experience, imagine any other European members sitting it down and saying, yes, go ahead, renegotiate these things? Well, they're not going to be very enthusiastic, but the fact is that uh, Europe, the, uh, the Eurozone, is having to think about changing the rules itself. We don't know whether they will, we don't know how fast, but it's possible that at some point after the European Parliament elections, in the second part of this decade, they will want to sit down anyway and reva revise the constitutional framework. So if that's happening, then that is always a kitchen sink sort of negotiation. It's open to any member state to put in proposals, so they can't say no. Uh, but as Gary Gibbon was explaining in his, uh, in his piece, um, most EU member states want Britain to be part of it. They want, the, they want Britain to be an active member of the European Union. But their patience is wearing thin, and the more we talk about leaving, the more we talk about getting out altogether, um, the less incentive there is for them to take our demand seriously. Well, so, now, you, you mentioned the second half of uh, this decade. I mean, that is a very long time. Um, in the meantime, matters will surely fester. Uh, and I'm wondering whether, as somebody with good US links, you actually detect anybody really seriously thinking about not uh, investing in Britain, for example. Well, I think the, the mood in the United States is one of watching closely what's going on, of some concern about the trend of debate here. There's no doubt about that. That's why President Obama spoke as he did to um, the Prime Minister last week and why the State Department has come out in the way that it did. Um, and I think the mood among American investors is also one of concern. We've sold Britain to them very successfully as the gateway to the single, uh, to the single market. That's why a lot of them, financial services, but many other parts of the American economy, have invested here. They're our biggest investor. Uh, when I was there last week, I found a lot of people in American business asking the question, what's going on, where's this going to end? But if you and your business colleagues are so convinced that Europe is the best thing for Britain and it is in the long-term interests of the British population, why are you remotely scared of a referendum? Surely the great idea of a referendum, we would have our first proper debate about Europe and the people who actually believe in it might just start talking because the real problem has been that the naysayers have had the, had, had the clean run. No, I don't think anyone um, who believes in the future of the European Union uh, is afraid of debate. The more debate there is, um, the more... So you wouldn't mind a referendum? I think the problem about a referendum is, first of all, that we don't know the circumstances yet um, uh, that one might be put. And secondly, um, referendums are very risky. They might be about the European issues that we're talking about today. They might turn out to be about the general politics of the moment, um, and the people might vote on something completely different. So I I think referendums are a very risky process. If we're clear about wanting to stay in the, uh, in the European Union, then we should go about it in that way. You've been up this mountain before. I mean, heavens, you, you were around somewhere in Europe even when Mrs Thatcher was at it. So is this more serious than anything we've ever seen before? Or is this just a yet another ramble through Britain's centuries-old sort of cynicism about Europe? I think it's more serious because clearly in one of our major parties there is a significant number of people who are talking about us leaving and I think that's different from the way it was in the 1990s when we last had this set of debates. So there is, a, there is an extreme scenario in which we might by um, through negotiation, through a failed negotiation, um, through a commitment to a referendum, we might end up uh, in a position where the British people turns its back on Europe. I don't think they will be doing that by thinking through the issues. You think um, it would be an accident, accidental departure? To some degree, I think it would be accidental. What do you, you think you, the chances are of that? I, I, I don't think they're huge at the moment. And I think if you, if you look at the latest opinion polls uh, over the last weekend, it was very interesting that for the first time you saw a small majority once again in favour of Britain staying in the European Union. So I think the more debate there is, and there has been more debate in the last few weeks, I think the more the reality realities of the advantages of our membership will come through. Of course we want reform, but we've got to keep our eye on the main chance, which is that our economic future must be in Europe. Sir Nigel Scheinwald, thank you very much for joining us.